What's up everyone? Online Prep Coach Asko here with PrepCoach.com and I just realized, do I look at videos here or up the actual camera? Let me know which one actually looks better. I don't know if it makes a difference, but I've recorded thousands of videos and I just realized that. Um, anyway, I'm here to talk about the sleep deprivation protocol that I've been doing for myself. I've had a lot of people ask me how I do it, how I get so much done in a day and a week and all that good stuff. And then also have a new baby and still find ways to work around the lack of sleep. So here to talk about that. Lots of things going into this, so we're gonna really keep things summarized and a little bit simpler. When we look at sleep, sleep deprivation, one of the biggest things and one of the biggest problems with it is the lack of REM sleep. So let's look at REM sleep. Let's forget about all the other stages of sleep. Let's just look at REM specifically. The other ones matter, but let's specifically focus there. The biggest thing that's going on there is that change with noradrenergic receptor and neuronal upregulation and basically refreshing. Think of REM sleep as the time whenever we actually do all the important shit. The other periods have their place and purpose, but let's focus in on that time as really restoring our hardware and software for the day. So if we're looking at that and understand sleep deprivation is taking this period of time, shorten it down into here. So if we were previously getting eight hours of sleep, now we're getting two hours of sleep or four hours of sleep, we're trying to essentially beef up our time spent in REM sleep, not only the total duration of the time spent in REM sleep, but the actual quality of that REM sleep. All REM sleep is not created equal. And I think that's a problem with a lot of the literature and a lot of the conversations you have with sleep experts and things of that nature where it's, if you get X amount of REM sleep spent, then okay, you're going to be better off. When in reality, you need the quality of REM sleep to be high as well. So since we are working on a lack of time total, we're trying to get as much REM sleep as we can and we're trying to get the highest quality of REM sleep that we can. Because of that, we're looking more at the noradrenergic receptor and neuronal side of things. So because of that, we're looking at doing this kind of a protocol is going to help to ameliorate a lot of the problems that are involved with it. So having the brain fog, having the speech-based issues, having some of the lack of basic abilities, like you just your, your, your time to fatigue is going to go up higher. So you will wear out quicker. You will not be able to react, so reaction time will be down and will not be as quick as you need it to be. All these little things add up, and it's just what happens with sleep deprivation. So because of that, we're looking at a couple things. So first of all, keep in mind this is what I do for myself. This can be tweaked through a bunch of different ways, but this does need to be novel. All of these nootropics, what they're doing from an ROS brain side of things, they need to be actually novel. If they're not done novel, these aren't things that we want to stimulate all the time. So because of the novelty of this, this needs to be done maybe once or twice per week. Can't do this all the time or else you're literally not helping yourself at all. You just become that perpetual person who's always taking these supplements and you're not getting any bang for your buck out of it. So I have a couple of them in front of me. I don't have all of them because I forgot. But what I do have, biggest player here. So this is before bed. Obviously, we're trying to get as parasympathetic as possible. So you, if you have to do deep belly breathing, if you have to meditate, anything like that, we're starting off with that. Putting ourselves in the right environment. Now, on top of that, we have our traditional vitamin D, K, citrus, bergamot, whatever we have. Your normal ones taken before bed, not really such big players, but from a circadian aspect, they need to be there. So the, the K's and the D's are the big ones. Get those out of the way, we look at lion's mane. So I have an eight to one extract here from nootropicsdepot.com. You were looking at, since it is being novel, we need a pretty robust dosage from a noradrenergic side of things. So we're looking for about a full gram to 1.5 grams of actual eight to one extract of lion's mane. So we're taking that. And then we're also looking at something, and this is a little addition that I make to myself because that lion's mane will do more than enough good from the noradrenergic side of things, but trying to drive more parasympathetic, parasympathetic trying to drive more parasympathetic activity. I'm starting to talk too fast, I'm sorry. Um, it's been a very busy day. As we're trying to drive more parasympathetic activity, we wanna make sure that we are driving as much restoration as we possibly can. So because of that, we were looking for neurological and myological, essentially parasympathetic activity, because there's obviously different kinds of activity going on in different places. So what I mean by that is bringing in something like a saffron. I know that I personally responded very well to if you actually diffuse the product, so you get some aromatherapy going on, you can actually get a lot of good um, responses neurologically from that. Now, whenever we switch it, we take that actually orally ingested product. We see a little bit more systemic full body, I will say relaxation, reduces anxiety, all that kind of fun stuff. Paired with citrus, actually see some pretty cool benefits. So used to that with aromatherapy, found out that, okay, that diffusion of air um, of, of water rather and fluids into the air actually accumulates on your wall behind you that can build up mold and things like that. So stopped using aromatherapy a while ago and I actually found this product. 
Ritual PM. So there's citrus, there is saffron, there's a couple other goodies in here. There is, oh yeah, the ashwagandha in here, central, only 125 milligrams, so you don't need to dose it anywhere, anywhere else, any higher. Ashwagandha is one of those things where very few products have that low of a dosage, so I like that. So right off the bat, that takes care of three degrees that I didn't need. But on top of that, there's also a little bit of magnesium, and then there was a little bit of... Um you know, just magnesium as well. So I take this product mainly for the ashwagandha, the saffron, and the citrus. So we only have those two supplements before bed. We get to sleep, we spend more time and get more quality spent in that REM cycle. We wake up and now this is where you have to kind of do an assessment and kind of ask yourself, what are we doing today? If we understand from a neurological aspect, if there's the need for full body stimulation and um, you're already using way too much caffeine at other points of the day, or you already used caffeine yesterday, let's eliminate some glutamate toxicity. Let's go through a different kind of neurological pathway. Let's go with a little bit of Nuopept. This Nuopept, again, Nootropics Depot, comes in 10 milligram tablets. Um, you could literally use that to ameliorate glutamate toxicity. You can use that as an adjunct replacement for your caffeine to not work in the same way, but still get the neurological regulation stimulation that you need to help with the actual processing of language, to help with speech, to help with that reaction time, all that good stuff. So think of that as a caffeine replacement. So you can do a caffeine one morning, a uh, Nuopep the next morning and keep alternating that. At the same time, if you're gonna be doing the repetitive task of the same thing all the time, which most people are, that's why we're getting up, it's to go to work, it's to go to the gym, things like that. That's where we're looking at an actual choline-based product. So think of choline as like the glucose for our brain. So glucose being, um, you know, pre-workout, Hours before, get to the gym, that's what our muscles use as fuel. And we're thinking about choline as being basically just the neurological food and fuel for our brain. So the substrate that our brain actually utilizes. So we can have something like an alpha GPC, 300-ish milligrams can do a lot of good, depending on the task. You can spot uh, space that out throughout the day, depending on what you're gonna be doing throughout the day. You also have options of adding in something like a, an, an adrafinil, modafinil type combination product here, because again, this is novel. Um, Modafinil, Drafinil specifically does upregulate connective um, uh, networks within the brain, and it actually does improve resting brainwave states over the long term. So we see tons of different neurological upregulations on the positive side of things, helping to ameliorate long-term changes and potential downregulation and problems that arise with Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, things like that. And that research was all done in, um, a lot of it was done in like narcoleptic patients and things like that, but it's out there and it's a very real thing. So modafinil or drafinil could also be there, but the big players is going to be either a choline and a neopept combination or a choline and a caffeine uh, combination. And depending on the day, that's what you're actually doing. So we know what we're doing before bed. We know what we're doing first thing upon waking. Now we need something from the neuroplastic world to come in and make sure that everything is firing properly neurologically and we have things going in the right direction. I have a specific protocol put together for my best friend in the world, Andrew Triana, and he put it together for me because I always had problems with speech. So what we did was we're trying to, um, at least in my world, fix and have that proper pairing and um, essentially flow state from the articulate cingulate to the uh, Wernick's area and the Broker's area. So I do specific handwriting drills, followed, well, speech drills rather first, specific handwriting drills, and then an actual neuroplastic game. For our purposes here, don't worry about anything that I said about the actual speech drills or the handwriting drills that may come in, but that's just for me and what I do. I talk a lot during the day, as you could tell. Um, but you can follow it up with a neuroplastic drill. So if you go, I actually have the app called Elevate. Go through, just do the daily training there. There's five different games and that will get things going in the right direction. So we have our brain actually getting ready and prepared for the day. So just to recap, before bed, you're looking at something like a low dose ritual PM, a high dosed lion's mane. We are sleeping. We're getting as much time and quality of spent time in REM sleep. We are waking up the next morning. We're then assessing our day and going with something like a full body stimulatory caffeine choline approach or a choline nuopept approach. Again, depending on the day, you don't have to have those both in there. Remember, choline is the substrate for our brain. And then the stimulatory um, energetic side of things can come from the nuopept, can come from the caffeine, or can come from the adrafinil, modafinil, depending on what you need for that day and how much work you have to do. We're following that up with a basic neuroplastic game in the form of elevate the app, and you're good to go. You do that one to two times per week on the days where you know you're gonna be in the least sleep and you're pretty much set. That is a very capsulated version of how I do my sleep deprivation protocol. It has gotten me through two, two children, um, a very successful business, um, 
you know, not missing training days, all that kind of fun stuff. And I really hope it can help you guys out. Um, the main reason why I'm making this video, because I've gotten this request multiple times since I've had a kid, was for one client out there who's actually having a child on Wednesday. So tomorrow they're inducing. Um, so I wish you guys all the best. Everyone, have a great day. Got tons more videos coming for you guys.